I just arrived from the Polyglot Gathering 2023, and this is my report for you guys. The Polyglot Gathering is an international event that takes place every year for polyglots and language lovers. During this event, that usually lasts between four and five days, there's plenty of things to do. There's talks, activities, fun games, table practices, all related to languages and language learning. So, for example, about the talks, you can attend talks about languages, about how to learn languages and tricks to learn languages, crash courses about languages like crash course of Norwegian, crash course of German, crash course of Spanish, so you can get started with languages that you don't speak. There's also talks about advanced grammar or advanced concepts in languages that you do speak, so there's plenty of talks for anyone to choose from. The activities, for example, you've got salsa classes, dancing, singing, karaoke, a lot of fun activities to just have fun in a multilingual environment. And the practice tables are just basically a bunch of tables where they put like a tiny flag of a country and during that hour in that table can only be spoken that language. So for example, if you want to practice your Italian, you go there, you look for the table that has the Italian flag and you start speaking Italian. The big question here is, is it worth it? And the answer is a big, huge Yes. You don't have to be a polyglot to attend the polyglot gathering. You can just speak one language. The only requisite is that you love languages. And if you love languages, I'm telling you, you're gonna love the event. During my whole life, there has been only two circumstances where I was free to change languages every second. That was when I was working for Disneyland Paris, the Disney park in Paris. Of course, there's a lot of guests from a lot of countries and you need to change languages every now and then. And then the polyglot gathering. Working in Disneyland is not that easy. The polyglot gathering is open for everyone. About the people there. Well, there's all kinds of people. This year we've been like 400 something participants, so that's a lot of people, you don't get to meet all of them, but you get to meet people you get along with and people you don't get along with. But what's important here to understand is that even with the people that you feel like the personalities do not match, that's not a problem because no one there is going to hurt you. It's not an aggressive environment. Everyone there wants to enjoy the event. Everyone there wants to have fun. Sometimes you meet people that uh, you, f you get along with and that's a beautiful experience, talking to them and sharing knowledge with them. Sometimes you meet someone and you're like, okay, 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 I need to go. And that's it. That's as far as, I, as, it, as it gets. So that's a beautiful thing that usually you don't get in real life. I must be completely honest with you guys, I have been so freaking lucky in this event because I got to meet some of the most incredible, beautiful human beings in history. I'm just going to name some of them because it would be impossible to name them all, but big shout out to one of the most incredible people I have ever met. His name is Roger from Netherlands. He was not only one of the best roommates I ever had, he was an incredible friend during the whole event. He took care of me even when I was feeling scared because of my talk, that I will talk in just a second about, about my talk. He was just there for me, having fun with me. We had such a beautiful connection with, we've got matching personalities, matching kind of humor. It was just an incredible experience sharing the Polyglot Gathering with him. The connection was so good that even people there in the Polyglot Gathering thought that we were friends for years and years. And the truth is that we met in the second day of the Polyglot Gathering. I can say, being brutally honest, that my experience in the Polyglot Gathering would not have been the same if it was not because of Roger. So, Roger, thank you. 
But then Roger was just one of the many people, incredible people that I met there. For example, big shout out as well to Astrid and Claudia, beautiful human beings, beautiful people. Having them there was a synonym of having fun, laughing and knowing that the evening was going to be great just because they were there. So girls, love you too. <sighs> and then there's many people more. There's the girls from Babbel. There were four girls working for Babbel, you know, the language learning platform, which is amazing. If you don't know Babbel, you should check it out, guys. And those four girls were just incredible. They were funny, they were clever. It was a delightful thing. Does that make sense? Delightful thing. It was, it was incredible to share time with them. And I'm going to stop there because if I keep talking about people, this video is going to be so long. About my talk, I was thrilled to be able to deliver a speech about por y para in Spanish. As you know, it is a quite difficult topic for Spanish learners. Most of my students struggle with por y para. I already have a video here on YouTube talking about the difference between por y para using examples from Disney movies. But in that talk, I used a different system, a story with Captain Jack Sparrow. Sparrow. I used a story with Captain Jack Sparrow and Bender from Futurama and they had to slay a dragon and in the way they taught us the usage of por and para. So, for example, I work. I trabajo por dinero. I work because of the money. Yo trabajo para ganar dinero. I'm working in order to earn money. The reason of my working is money. The goal of my working is money. Does that make sense, guys? The talk was just incredible. Everything went perfectly. There was a lot of people there. There were like 60 people, more or less, attending the meeting, which is amazing. They all loved the meeting. At the end of the meeting, some people come by and said, thank you, Jose, it was incredible. Some of them took pictures with me and that made me feel like Tony Robbins or Oprah Winfrey. I was like, what the hell is happening here? and basically was an incredible experience being able to share my knowledge with a lot of people live there. Because Polyglot Panda, as you know, is based online. All the classes, all my students are made online. All the services that I deliver, we've got the Telegram group for the pandas, we've got the website, we've got the compilation of free resources, we've got this YouTube channel, we've got plenty of resources that you can find on polyglotpanda.com, but everything's online, which is good but sometimes it is so good to feel the presence of people, right? To feel that you're teaching them and they are acquiring that knowledge and then they come by and they say, thank you, we understood it, that was great. And you feel like <coughs> So, as a conclusion, let's finish this video. The Polyglot Gathering was an amazing, incredible experience for sure i'm attending next year am i going to deliver another speech next year probably yes if they allow me they invite me absolutely yes and not only that now that i know that they don't only have language things they've got salsa and dancing and singing karaoke things that are not exclusively language related now that i know that I would like to make kind of some classes about musical theater, dancing, teach people how to dance Broadway songs, which is, as you know, it's my thing. So it's going to be interesting next year. And that's all for now, guys. I've been one week away from my office. I've got millions of emails to answer, millions of students to teach. I've got millions of things to do. So vamos a decir, Hasta la vista. Ciao, Pendes! Ah!